Hey friends, and welcome back to Cleaning Therapy. And if you're new here, my name is Jenny, and I just wanna say welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by today. We are gonna be tackling this mess in my living room and also in my kitchen and dining room while my two-year-old goes down for his nap. So this is essentially a nap time clean with me, but we're also gonna do something a little bit different today. So my primary goal here on my channel has always been to bring you relaxing cleaning motivation. Um, many of you guys also struggle with anxiety and depression just like I do. When you put things out there on YouTube, a lot of times you'll attract your tribe and I seem to be attracting uh, many people who are going through very similar things as I am. And if nothing else, if you don't actually have a mental health issue or disorder, um, you have in the past felt at least overwhelmed or stressed out uh, when it comes to managing your home. So we all have such similar things that we're going through and I think we can all relate to each other. But this particular video I will be doing in a podcast format. So I will primarily be speaking the whole time and this will lend itself well for something to listen to while you're cleaning. I know I love to listen to podcasts while I'm cleaning. As you can see, I've got my AirPods in right now and I'm listening to a podcast right now while I'm cleaning. So that really gets me going and helps pass the time when I can hear someone else speaking and either telling me a story or teaching me something new probably something either educational or motivating or inspirational and it really helps to pass the time and you know it kind of helps me enjoy the cleaning a little bit more because my mind is engaged my body is engaged and it just feels kind of like a complete picture so this would lend itself really nicely as a podcast or if you're in the car you could even listen to this uh, because you don't actually have to watch me clean to appreciate the podcast aspect of it. So I did a poll on my community tab, I believe it was last week, and I asked you guys if you were more interested in the relaxing cleaning motivation with the relaxing music and just kind of focused on the cleaning or if you might be interested in a little bit of anxiety tips and tricks and just a little bit more anxiety management content on the voiceover. And I was really surprised that you guys came in with the votes only one percentage of point away from each other. So they were essentially tied. And so it seems like pretty much half of you are interested in the relaxing content and half of you are interested in anxiety tips and tricks. So the way I'm going to do this moving forward, just to be able to kind of alert you guys as to what video you're getting into is by calling this the anxiety diary. And that video will include some anxiety tips and tricks. It's going to include some anxiety management conversation. And, you know, it'll be a little bit more pulling back the curtain and getting behind some of the thoughts and things that we deal with when we're managing anxiety and depression and also how it relates to keeping a clean home and keeping our houses in order. And having said that, it doesn't mean that these videos won't be relaxing because I really want to try to make them relaxing and I'm going to try my very best to still give you that relaxing cleaning motivation even in these podcast videos because I do also believe that listening to someone speak can be very relaxing as well and many of the podcast speakers that I listen to are also very relaxing to me so I am hoping to be able to bring that aspect into these podcast episodes as well but let me know what you think in the comments and I always do pay attention to my analytics and I like to see what you guys truly like so that I can make this the best channel for you guys that I can so I'd like to start by just exploring the connection between a clean house and a calm mind and you guys know this has been the foundation of my channel since the beginning and I, I love to let the cleaning illustrate that transformation. My house starts off as dirty and then in the process of cleaning it on a cleaning video, you guys get to watch the transformation happen before your eyes and it's very satisfying to see something go from messy to clean and to see that transformation happen. 
And I think my role is to show you guys that that can also happen in our minds. And just like we take, you know, this messy house and all of this dust and dirt and, you know, we clean it up, we sweep it up, we wipe it up and we make it clean and beautiful again. That same process is happening behind the scenes in our minds. And there's a few parallels there. Uh, besides just that transformation of messy to clean. And we can go ahead and unpack those for just a couple of minutes. So first of all, I would like to draw attention to the fact that even when we clean our homes, they're not perfectly clean. So this room right here is clean, but if you picked up the area rug, you would find dirt. If you looked at a light fixture, you would find dust. There's probably some dust bunnies underneath something and there's definitely some cobwebs in the corner and some other things that either I'm not aware of or I'm just simply not cleaning right now. So this house is going to be clean when I finish this video, but it's not gonna be perfectly clean and that's okay. And I really do think we need to remember that the same thing is happening in our minds. So if we're on an anxiety journey or a depression journey or any other aspect of our mental health, that journey won't be perfect either. That's a really important thing to keep in mind as we are decluttering our minds and cleaning up our thoughts and trying to clear some of the cobwebs out of the types of thinking that we've been stuck in. It's just really important to understand that that's not gonna be a complete and perfect journey because we live in a broken world and things are not perfect. And even people who do not have mental health issues per se, they still can struggle with their thoughts. And people who are perfectly healthy and sound of mind can run into errors in thinking and they can have unreasonable thoughts and beliefs and they can struggle with cognitive distortions and all kinds of things. So it's sometimes helpful just to focus on the thoughts that you're having that are working and to hold on to those and move forward with those. So as we go a little bit deeper into this conversation, I'd like to talk for a minute about the role of thoughts in mental health management. I remember probably about 15 or 20 years ago now, I was speaking with a friend and she was telling me that her therapist was really helping her with her thoughts. And she just kept telling me, Jenny, it's, it's all in the thoughts. It's the thoughts are so important. They're more important than I ever thought they were. And I remember listening to her tell me that and it did not make any sense to me. I'll be honest with you guys, I was so late to that game. I did not feel like in my experience, it felt like the thoughts were the driving force. To me, it felt like the feelings were the driving force. I feel like the shifts in mood and perspective and just those feelings of anxiety or panic washing over you, that felt like the real enemy. I couldn't see how my thoughts could be the enemy because many times when I was feeling my strongest anxiety and depression feelings, I actually wasn't thinking much of anything. There wasn't much going on uh, in my brain because I was just in a flood or a roller coaster of feelings. And so that just did not ring true to me at that time. And so I was pretty dismissive of what she was telling me and it wouldn't be till over a decade later, close to 20 years later, before I would revisit that subject again. So a lot of you guys know by now that I drive my husband to work, to and from work, and he works over in the next state, and it's about a 30 minute drive, give or take. And on that drive, um, I have to go across several bridges. And this one particular night, he was on a night schedule, and I was picking him up at 11.30 p.m. And in this particular state, it is very dark and there's not many lights at all. It's just a very rural area. And I was headed to pick him up late at night. It was pitch dark and I was going over one of these bridges and just out of the blue, I had a panic attack. And it had been years since I had had a panic attack. And I 
just remember thinking, where did that come from? I am not afraid of bridges per se. Um, I'm not afraid of driving at night specifically, but for some reason, I just lost it going over that bridge and I didn't feel grounded at all. And something switched over in my mind. And I think the most frustrating thing about that situation was I knew that I would have to keep going back night after night in that exact same situation. And if any of you guys have been in my shoes, a lot of times it kind of imprints on your nervous system. And so if you end up in that exact same situation, you're more likely to have the panic attack all over again because it's like your body recognizes that you're in that same situation and sometimes it'll set you right back into that state. So for me, I wanna avoid doing that thing again because it actually makes me feel like I'm going to have that happen again and I don't want that to happen again. So I'll end up avoiding that situation, which they say is not the best thing to do. It's best to just learn to breathe through that situation and relax your body a little bit and get through it. But when you're driving, it's very hard to practice a lot of those things because you have to focus on the road. Um, you really have to be engaged. And so I was just kind of stuck as to how I was going to fix this. So I got back in my car the next night and started trying to breathe my way through the bridge, but I had another panic attack. So after the second one, I definitely started to dread the bridge and I was not looking forward to picking up my husband the next night. And I pretty much would have rather do anything else but go pick him up from work. So I got in my car again at night and started down the road that would lead me to the bridge. But this time I decided to try something different and I have no idea where this came from. I didn't learn it anywhere. It just kind of came to me as I was driving that I would play reverse psychology on myself and I would trick myself into believing that the road I was on was the risky part. That was the real threat, but that once I got to the bridge, I would be safe. So as crazy as it sounds, and I know it does, I tried to trick myself into thinking that I was on the dangerous road, the straight road, and that once I got to the bridge, I would be safe. So I just kept telling myself, Jenny, you just need to make it to the bridge and then you're gonna be okay. Once you get to the bridge, you'll be safe and everything will work out and you know that the second you get on that bridge, you're good to go, you're safe. Nothing can happen to you. You just need to make it to the bridge. So I'm telling myself these things, even though I know that the bridge is the part that's the risk for me. The bridge is where I'm having the panic attacks. The bridge is the part I'm dreading, but instead I'm telling myself the opposite, that the bridge is your safety zone. Just make it to the bridge and you'll be okay. And just like I was hoping, it settled everything down in my mind. And when I got to the bridge, I was just so relaxed. Even though the last two nights, the bridge was setting me off. And as soon as I got to that bridge, I felt so relaxed. I felt like my pulse was slowing. I felt like my breathing was slowing. And I just took a deep breath and thought, oh, thank goodness I am now safe on the bridge. And that's what ended up stopping the panic attacks. And I never had another one after that. So what is the point of this story, you might ask? Um, it's definitely not to give you that same advice because I think that that is kind of wild and crazy advice. So I wouldn't just tell someone if they're having a panic attack necessarily to uh, take my advice on this. Uh, but what I learned from that episode was the power of our thoughts. And that is my point, is that our thoughts do matter. And if my thoughts about this bridge, my beliefs about the bridge, my thoughts about the bridge, if those could affect my nervous system, my feelings, my emotions, my fears, if they could affect all those things that much just by changing my thoughts, then I thought there was some merit to this idea that it all starts in our thoughts. 
So my first mental health management tip for you is to manage your thoughts. Be the boss of your thoughts. Not everything you think is true. Not all thoughts are trustworthy. Not all thoughts are helpful. The average person has 6,200 thoughts per day. That's a lot of thoughts to sort through and weed through and figure out which ones are trustworthy, which ones are helpful, which ones we would like to engage with. And I would actually be willing to bet that people who struggle with their mental health, especially anxiety or OCD or something like that, they might have way more thoughts than that. I can imagine that they would have more thoughts going through their head than the average person. Many of you guys know that my husband, Tony, has muscular dystrophy and uses a wheelchair. And sometimes he'll kind of make the comment or joke around that he plays life on hard mode. And he's absolutely right about that. He's just got this built-in factor that makes everyday tasks more difficult. So he's playing life on hard mode. And I have often related to this in my own mental health journey and that sometimes I feel like just the sheer number of thoughts that I have going on in my mind and the worries and things like that, along with sorting them all out and figuring out where they go, makes me feel like I'm playing life on hard mode too. And so maybe you can relate to that and let me know in the comments if that rings true for you too, that sometimes just battling through all of these thoughts, it's kind of like an overgrown jungle in your mind. Um, they're all tangled together and sometimes we just don't even know where the beginning is or the end is. It's just like a ton of thoughts and worries and what ifs and feelings of overwhelm all mixed together in one mind and you just need to get through this jungle and find some clarity, but it's very, very difficult. And sometimes that can feel like we're playing life on hard mood, but let me know if you can relate to that too. Now I do want to give a little disclaimer that everything I'm sharing with you guys today is just my experiences and you know what's happened with me and my anxiety management journey. Um, it's not to say that this is what's going to work for you or that you know the way I've handled it is the way that you've handled it. I am not a professional. I can't give medical advice or professional counseling advice. All I can do is just share. Um, some of my experiences from one friend to another and I do consider you guys my friends you guys have been coming along with me on this journey you have supported me on my channel and you have left wonderful wonderful comments um, sometimes just reading your comments will just immediately pull me out of whatever funk I'm in and so I just have to say thank you for that you guys are wonderful you're big-hearted you're loving you're kind and you're encouraging and so I only hope that I can give that back to you in some way as well. So from one friend to another, I hope that something in this podcast is helpful for you. And if you are struggling today with your mental health, I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with you and I am for you. I'm rooting for you. We can do this together. We can get through this together. And as we learn from our experiences and as we grow and change and find healthier ways to think and feel and be we can encourage each other along the way and if you're a christian like me you might be comforted by romans 12 2 which says do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and i really feel like that hits home with these thoughts that we're having um, we need to renew our minds and we need to do a little house cleaning in our minds and get out some of those junky thoughts that are not helping us or those worrisome, fearful or catastrophic thoughts that are not helping us. And this process of renewing your mind is the way forward. And I really believe that that is part of our mental health journeys. As you guys know by now, I love to clean my way to calm and I think cleaning is therapeutic and it is definitely one of the most used tools in my toolkit for managing my anxiety especially, but also depression. But managing my thoughts is another tool in my toolkit. So that's what we talked about today. And I think it's every bit as important. And there are so many other tools in my toolkit that I would love to share with you guys in future videos if you're interested. 
because I believe that managing your mental health is a complex issue. I don't think there's just one quick fix. I do believe that for many people, it's a combination of many little things that add up to big wins um, in your anxiety journey. So it may involve medication at some point or at every point. It may involve um, exercise. It may involve nutrition uh, changes, changes to your diet or the things that you've been eating, things like that. It could involve decluttering and cleaning your home and it could involve some thought management um, or many more things that I'm not even thinking of. Everybody is on their own journey. We all respond differently to different things. And my hope and prayer for everyone is that they find exactly what works for them and that they're able to keep doing it and making progress toward better mental health. So this was just kind of like a brief introduction to this sort of video that might appear on my channel from time to time. I'm not sure if I'll do another one like this or it will just be a one and done. But if I do anything in the future that is anxiety management related, it will be on this type of video. So if you guys have any questions about anxiety management, depression management, cleaning your house when you have anxiety and depression, um, or anything else cleaning related or mental health related, maybe that would be a great addition to this podcast is to have a questionnaire format and we can just go through all the questions and answer them. And then you guys could add some more things in the comments. So if I ever plan on doing something like that, I will go ahead and create a poll for you guys so that you can vote on that and we can go in the direction that you guys are interested in. So at this part, it was starting to get toward the end of Alex's nap and I knew he'd be waking up really soon. So I was just finishing up here in the dining room, pulling out these little toys from the lantern that I saw and getting this room all swept up. And he actually came out. You're going to see him in a second right here. And he just wanted to help mommy sweep, which is typical for him. He's two and a half and he really just wants to help and be involved. So we were tackling that together and getting that all cleaned up. I want to say a special thank you to you guys for being here with me today and for trying out this new video with me. I really hope that you liked it and got something valuable from it. And let me know in the comments if you're new to my channel. Please introduce yourself. I would love to get to know you a little bit better. And please make sure you're subscribed so I can see you again on the next video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back to my channel and hanging out with me. I'm always so grateful for each and every one of you. And I just want you to know before you leave my video that if you're struggling with your mental health today, you're not alone and I believe in you. I love you guys and I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye friends.